In this video, we're going to use insert mesh projection strength in order to wrap other objects or conform other surfaces to other objects, as well as cloth transpose that so we can, again, stick other surfaces to other surfaces. We're going to use a matchmaker brush to, again, conform surfaces, as well as project all and project history. And then finally, we'll use wrap deformers using a bend arc and the lattice deformer type object deformer to wrap a surface to another. So let's talk about in ZBrush how to conform one object to another or the surface of a subtool to another surface of another subtool uh, in ZBrush. So you'll see in here we have a wrap object that's just a 3D object. If I turn on line, it's just a 3D word that is uh, spelled out wrap. And then we have an egg shape back behind it. So with wrap subtool selected, one way we can conform this word to the object and back is to turn it into an IMM brush. So I'm gonna hit B, well, first I'm gonna hold down shift and snap my camera angle. So I'm looking right at that word because that's how I wanna capture it to my brush. I'm gonna hit B on my keyboard. We're gonna to go to create insert mesh new and you're gonna see we have a new wrap insert mesh brush. In fact, if we hit B again to bring up our brush menu, there's our new brush and you can go in here to brush save as if you wanna reuse this brush if you'd like. So I'm gonna select the egg shape object. I'm going to turn off the wrap word uh, temporarily uh, and we'll go ahead and we'll keep polyframe on. But we'll go ahead and turn off line. So now if I go through here and I start insert inserting that object onto my uh, other object, you're going to see it does it uh, fine. However, it's not really conforming to the surface. However, we can go in here to brush modifiers and there is a projection strength in here. So if we undo that brush stroke, go in here to projection strength, crank that up to 100. And now as we drag this word out, you're going to see it's going to conform to the underlying surface. That's just a really easy way to go through here and just create a brush that will conform to any surface. And uh, if you want to, let's go ahead and undo those. If you uh, hold down control after you start dragging out, it'll snap to your brush size. You can go up here to your draw size. This is if you want to, you know, have it conform to an underlying surface, but also have it be consistent uh, with your other brush strokes. Now you're going to see a couple problems here. Number one, if I start dragging this across, it will start interacting with other previously placed insert mesh brushes because they do exist on the subtool. Uh, another thing too is if I go over here, uh, it'll interact with those as well as as soon as I leave the confines of our object underneath, it'll start doing some wacky things with that projection. So uh, one of these I can fix. The other one, I'll give you a few different options that'll uh, let you avoid that. So if we undo all of those uh, and we go through here and of course we're wrap, wrap, wrap. And then we say we want to go the other way and uh, have it not interact with those other objects. All you have to do is these last three I drew it, that I drew on here, I want to split to their own subtool. One easy way to do that is control drag in your document to unmask your object. Control shift drag over a little piece of that egg shape. Control shift A to visibility grow all. And then we can go down here to split hidden. So all of the hidden parts, which was all the wrap verts, that'll split it off into its own subtool. So now we have an egg shape. Here's our insert mesh uh, wrap object. So if I go back to my egg shape, hit B on our keyboard, make sure we have our wrap brush selected. Now when I drag on it, it will ignore those other previously drawn uh, words because they're not part of this subtool. And then you can just continue you know, overlapping these. You also see this one came out a little bit thicker than the others. That's just because you dragged it out bigger and your Z intensity is set to 100. Uh, you can have a little bit more control over that. So let's go ahead and um, We'll go down to these words here and we'll just delete those out of here. And then back on our egg, uh, just some basic, more basic IMM functionality. If we drag this out, you're going to see this is this amount of thickness and that's controlled by the Z intensity. Uh, another thing you also need to know is over here underneath depth, it's in set to embed of three. I don't know why it chose three by default, uh, but you can undo that. And if we embed this at say 10, that's going to raise this out a little bit. In fact, you can just grab this sphere over here. So if we grab that to say 29 and we drag this out, you're going to see it's going to be uh, out above the object. And of course, as you guessed, if you put that underneath and drag this out, it'll actually be buried inside the object here. Uh, so, you know, generally speaking, if you set this to zero, it's going to embed it halfway across. So if we go down here to our split menu, you'll see whenever we insert on here, it'll auto mask that's actually underneath your auto masking sec um, menu for your brush it's going to say auto mask mesh insert so whenever you drag a mesh or an insert on here it'll automatically mask everything except for what you're working on that's just an easy way for you to go through here and move scale and rotate but you'll see as i move this out there's actually some of that word embedded in and in fact it's exactly half of it uh, because the embed depth is set to zero so half of the 
uh, depth is shown and then the other half is kind of buried in the object. So what you can do is you can you know take this embed out a little bit, let's say three. So then now when we push this on, uh, it'll be just sitting on the surface. Another thing you can do is you can make it thinner if you take your Z intensity and drop this down to say 39. Now when you drag it out, it'll be sitting on the surface, but it will be thinner. Uh, but if Z intensity at 100 just isn't quite thick enough and you don't wanna go capture thicker letters, remember you can always go in here to brush modifiers and then down here underneath the strength multiplier, we can set this to like two and now it'll be sitting on the surface and it will be thicker by um, two. <laughs> it'll be twice as thick. So uh, play with these numbers. We'll go ahead and set this back to one and uh, Z intensity 100 embed at three is fine. Uh, so I'm gonna control drag to unmask everything, control shift drag over this sphere, a little piece of it, control shift A to visibility, grow all contiguous verts. And then our other verts are hidden right now. So we can go down here to geometry, modify topology, delete hidden. And now we have an egg with the word wrap in front of it again. Now, another thing we can do that I think is pretty cool, it might be one of my favorites, is so we have our word right here. And if we turn on line, you'll see we have, it's it got real thickness. So if I go into my uh, transpose brush option, so we'll, go here, we'll hit B on our keyboard to go to our brush menu. T to narrow it down to transpose, which is basically your gizmo, how you move, scale, and rotate something. And you'll see we have some options in here. Transpose, classic, cloth, and smart. We want to choose transpose cloth. So BTA will select that. So we've switched from regular transpose to transpose cloth. Now, if you just start moving this around, you're not gonna see much of a difference. However, if we go in here to our dynamics menu, and I'll dock this over here on the left, uh, if we turn on collision volume, what that's going to do is anything that's not selected. So for, in this case, the egg shape, if we hit this button, it's going to turn that egg shape into a collision volume. So now when I move this back again with brush transpose cloth selected, as I'm moving, it's going to conform this object to the underlying object and then allow you to kind of just push it up against there. Um, now you're gonna see it's floating. So if you undo that, take this inflate. So in the collision volume area, put this inflate down to like 0.1. So now when we push this back, uh, it will go ahead and collide much closer to the object itself. Now, one problem with this is since this object has thickness, it's treating the thickness of this object as if it was made of cloth. So if we push too hard, it's gonna start, you know, bending and, you know, how cloth would interact if you took a thick, uh, empty piece of cloth and mushed it against the surface, it'll start bending these other verts. Now you can kind of, you know, you could always go up here to firmness and crank that firmness up in your dynamic settings and then push it back down and avoid a little bit of that. Uh, but another option you can do is you can just wrap a single-sided version of this and then uh, give it thickness later. So let's hold down control shift. I'm gonna control shift tap between these two poly groups. That'll get rid of that back poly group. And now I'll control shift tap this orange one. So now I'm just left with the pink parts. I'm gonna go to geometry, modify topology, delete hidden. So now we just have a single-sided version of that word wrap. So now when I go in here and I do my, you know, cloth wrap, it'll go whoop right here and just you know conform perfectly to that. Now, if I wanna add thickness to this, I can go to my Z modeler brush, B, Z, M to select that. I can hover over a face, I can hold down space bar, I can go extrude all polygons, and I can just pull out and that'll give me you know, letter thickness. Uh, another cool option is underneath geometry is we can go down here to dynamic subdivision, turn on dynamic, we'll turn smoothness down to zero, and then you have a thickness option. So if we crank this up, um, this is gonna give you dynamic thickness. Now it's not real, it's just a preview. So if you turn dynamic off, or the shortcut for that is shift D to turn it off and then D to turn it back on, you're going to see that it's going to give you a, a preview of what it would look like uh, with thickness. Now, just like with the embed depth, if we go over here where it says offset and we turn on um, transparent, you're gonna see uh, half this word is embedded in the object and the uh, other half is uh, out in front. That's gonna be controlled by this offset. So if we go to offset of negative 100, now the real geometry is out here in front and then the preview thickness geometry is going inside and then the opposite. So now the real geometry is on the inside here and then the fake preview geometry is being pushed out. 
Another thing you can do uh, on this fake preview geometry, you'll see some of it might be a little wobbly. You can go in here to the smoothness option and crank that up to 100, and that'll ensure that any corners, uh, it'll resolve those a little bit better. So, um, you know, as it's giving you that thickness, uh, it'll make it a little bit of a, yeah, a little more of a aesthetically pleasing result. So we'll go ahead and turn off transparent here. And you'll see, again, this is just dynamic thickness. It's not real. So you can just turn that off and continue to model if you'd like. Or if you do like this geometry, you can hit dynamic apply. And now it is real geometry. So if you go through here and move these verts around, um, it will move the tops and the bottoms because it's real now. It's not just a preview. Now, one thing to be careful of is if you're like, okay, great. I had it conform to the surface. Now I just want to move scale and rotate this around. And let's say we want to scale it inwards. If you start scaling it in, you're going to notice it's going to start acting uh, a little bit funny. You know, it's like, why can't I scale this anymore? That's because if you go to B for your brush menu, T for your transpose brushes, it's still set to transpose cloth. So it's treating this geometry as if it was cloth. Uh, in fact, if we want to, we can turn on our floor just so you can see see it visibly. And uh, since we have floor collision turned on, we can go down here and we could even turn on uh, self collision a little bit. So if I run the simulation, oops, let's turn that gravity down just a bit. As I run the simulation, it'll fall to the ground and those words will just be little squirmy cloth pieces. So just keep in mind, if we want to go back to regular transpose, just hit B on your keyboard, T, and then choose R for, I guess, regular old transpose. And now you can move scale rotate as you would expect and it won't treat your move scale and rotations like cloth and it also won't it'll ignore any collision volumes because it's not a cloth transpose so we'll go ahead and take our undo slider back to where we kind of started with just the wrap word sitting here and our egg shape back behind and we'll talk about another option which is we'll have everything visible we'll turn off line in our polyframe options there is another brush if we go to b to bring up our brush menu m to bring up the M brushes, and then there's M again, you can hit the matchmaker brush. What you can do is if you start dragging on your object and then pull, you'll see it kind of does something. Uh, and if you go to, let's go ahead and turn off our floor here. If you go to the side, you'll see, oh, it's actually wrapping our object. And it looks like I didn't go back far enough. There we go. Now our the back of our object is back. So uh, basically what uh, matchmaker does is, is you can kind of see it conforms this object with the object behind it. Now, let's hit W and let's go ahead and move this a little bit closer. And one thing to keep in mind is if this Z intensity is lower than uh, 100, if you go in wrap, it's not gonna wrap it completely, it'll just slightly start to conform it. Uh, however, of course, if the Z intensity is up to 100 and you click on the object and pull, anything that's visible, it'll go ahead and try and conform that object. Then you can hit W and just kind of scoot it back and you'll see, okay, yeah, that pretty much matched it. Now, just like the IMM, pro, uh, what was it? The IMM projection strength, if uh, this is kind of camera based as well. So if I'm down here and then I use the matchmaker brush, it's going to want to conform and let's go into solo mode. It's basically conforming these verts straight back. So based on that camera, that weird camera angle I chose, it's going to just project those verts straight back onto our object. And in this case, you know, not that you would want to do that, but there's something to keep in mind. But in this case, what might be better is if we took our, uh, we again, we held down control shift, and then we just isolated just these pink front verts and then geometry modified topology delete hidden. It might be better to go through here and just do a single sided uh, matchmaker, push this back and then give yourself some thickness uh, with those other options that we were talking about. Uh, and also, just be careful of your camera angle. You know, you want to look straight back at the object. You don't want it at a glancing angle because then it's going to have some weird projection issues. You know, just kind of put your camera where it needs to go, push or just pull that matchmaker brush straight across, and there you go. You're conformed. And then once more, just kind of push that back into place. So we'll go ahead and then do that. So we're back to our regular words here. There's another option. And, uh, you know, again, we're going to hold down control shift. We're going to isolate just so we have that front facing single sided geometry modified topology delete hidden. If I hit W and we push this back so it's a little bit closer to that egg shape, what we can do is go to our tool menu, sub tool, sub menu, and there is a project sub menu in here. Uh, there's two options, project all and project history. Project history is grayed out. We'll talk about that in just a second. But if we go here to project all, it'll start pushing those verts 
or grabbing those verts and pulling it back uh, to conform to that underlying surface. Uh, you'll see it just grabbed a few that were close enough, but if you crank this distance up to one and hit project all, it'll grab all those verts and just pull them right back to that surface. And then at this point, you can give it dynamic thickness or extrude thickness or panel loops thickness if you want, um, but that's just another way to conform. Uh, if you weren't so inclined, you want to use history. You can grab the egg shape, control tap the latest point in history to store those vert positions. In fact, we can take this polymesh sphere, uh, we can clone it off, we can delete it out of our scene completely uh, or out of our subtool stack. And it doesn't even matter. It will, those verts positions are stored in there. So if we go now, go down here to project history with our distance set to one, it will project to that stored vertex position history. And the last one here, I'm going to go ahead and append our egg shape back. So again, we have our wrap word, we have our egg shape here, and I'm going to undo our wrap word back to where we have thickness with the back. Uh, I'm going to hit W on our keyboard. And one more I can think of is going in here to your gear icon, and we can choose something like bend arc. So there's a bunch of deformers in here that can do somewhat of this, like the, um, the lattice deformer, you can go through here and you can pull these cones here and you get more or less resolution if you want to just uh, unmask some of these. So for example, if we control alt drag over the top here and then just move this back, it'll start moving these. So of course, I think we need one more down the middle. So then we'll control alt drag over the top, control alt drag over the bottom and that unmasks those points. And then we can just kind of pull this back and then, you know, down the sides, you would do the exact same thing. Some better choice maybe is to go into the gear icon, choose bend arc, and you'll see we just have three cones. Uh, the orange one is twist if you hover over it, which we weren't, we're not going to use. The white one is radius, and then the green one is angle. So from the top view, we can take this green one and pull it back. And it's not maybe not going to be perfect, but we can kind of eyeball that angle here. And we can hit W, and we can kind of move that into place here. And then uh, we'll go back in here, and we'll choose a bend arc, and we'll go to the side. And now we're going to choose this green one, and we'll conform it in this direction. Now you're going to see is I continue to pull it backwards, like, okay, that angle's perfect. Oh, now it's a good angle, but it's making my text really big. Remember you have that radius slider. So if you take that radius up, it'll make it bigger. If you take the radius down, however, it'll shrink it back to what it should be. So you can play around with these two sliders here to kind of use a deformer to wrap that under that one surface to another. And then again, you can go back in here and massage it into place with just your regular old transpose. So again, maybe not perfect, but, um, just another option, another tool in your tool belt. Now, there may be other options I'm not thinking of. If you can think of some, please post them in the comments. You'll be educating everybody, especially me. I always like to know any cool novel ways to, you know, do things in ZBrush. So if you can think of another way to conform one subtool to another in ZBrush, please post it in the comments.